Should camera manufacturer has one sensor per generation? We're all having fun Bathing in the sun We're all building castles Castles in the sun We're having fun We're having fun Yes, I'm actually testing a new lens at the moment. This is the TT Artisan 40mm 2.8 macro. But it's not about the review today. I want to talk about sensor. This question has been bugging me for a while. And you see, back in the analog days, things were much simpler. Well, when it comes to image quality, we are only always going to consider two things. The lens and the film. <laughs> Thumb. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. Uh, it's very different to what we are, you know, experiencing right now. Not only just the lens, but also about the processor and also the digital sensor, which is, you know, a combination of different things together. You know, I'm not a technical genius, but it is, it's a lot more complicated than what we used to experience, especially if you're as old as I am. So back in the old days, photographers only need to consider those two things that I just mentioned. So you can grab any, literally any cameras produce great results whether it's going to be a uh, 200 pound cheapo beginner level SLR or a expensive like 3000 pounds SLR I'm not talking about digital just SLR film SLRs so like, there is no difference there because as long as you get a good lens and good films you can get good results right and these days it's very different if you buy a beginner level this uh, DSLR or mirrorless cameras and you, when you compare to the high-end cameras that's a significant difference in terms of image quality it's only because they employ different sensors so this is what I don't get because as a manufacturer you want to lower the cost for manufacturing and while keeping your customers happy uh, this is very impossible to achieve these days and that's why they have produced various different kind of sensors from the very basic sensors to the very expensive latest and the greatest stuff and i do know that manufacturers these days do recycle their older generation sensors to their uh, uh, beginner level cameras so instead of wasting it they just chuck it to the lower end camera which is understandably true and probably efficient or cost effective but to me i think it's kind of defy the purpose of what we used to experience in the analog days while you can actually get top results with cheap cameras and these days it's harder to achieve that i know there is the debate there you know you can you can basically achieve anything if you wish if you've got the skills and eyes right but there is obviously a technical differences between a lower end sensors to a high end sensors for instance dynamic range and you know the the amount of details you can capture right so this is something that I possibly want manufacturers to do is to basically rationalize it and just employ one type of sensors for each of the generations. So whether it's going to be beginner or high end, just have one sensor, just like the old days have one film, you know, not one film, but you know what I mean. Um, so it's, it just makes things a lot simpler and uh, let the camera features decide what model a consumer should get. You see, another problem that we're facing these days is wastage. We are wasting so many different sensors every year. The manufacturers just simply overproduce them, and if they don't sell, they are going to be ended up in the landfill site, or worse, just basically dumps. Uh, that's no good, right? You know that yeah, they can sell it for cheap for other manufacturers to do other things, but the truth is, it's still a waste. So why not they just concentrate all the R and D? all the resources just to develop one type of sensor and mass produce it to reduce the cost and also using hardware to um, kind of disable certain features so just in case some people are trying to hack the sensors and enable all the features so you can still grade them just by having a hardware key in the logic board soldered onto it to disable certain things if you want to be a lower end camera for instance so that way I think is much more uh, financial feasible and also make it more uh, appealing to just let's say the not so demanding photographers and creatives so that way we can have the same image quality if someone wants to achieve the best result with the lowest amount of money they can invest i know that is against what the manufacturer wants but i think that may actually help the overall sales of the cameras because everybody can get great images without having to worry about Oh, that may not be enough oh i'm not getting the best sensors da, 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 da. you know like that sort of thing but well, we're all hoping to get the latest and the greatest right but what if 
we are talking about latest and the greatest in an image quality point of view, not so much about features, because like I said, those can be um, uh, disabled by the manufacturers using the hardware within the actual camera logic boards. So that means that they can still grade the different cameras with several different features that will appeal to certain different uh, type of photographers or creatives. The more demanding will have, let's say, faster uh, 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 focusings, for instance, and that sort of features, right? So that kind of brings back to the old analog days where we can have uh, all types of uh, different cameras but only defined by their feature sets rather than the image quality because I think as a photographer as a creative we should all deserve to have the greatest image quality at any one time right I think this is the best for everybody maybe because of my analog background I come from the film era so like uh, my choices were very simple I remember the days when I actually bought a very simple SLR for a couple of hundred quid and then uh, when I progressed as a photographer I upgraded to a more advanced camera giving me more features but in terms of image quality I have the flexibility to upgrade when needed you know like even with the 200 pound SLR I could get uh, a very high grade lens to produce better images as long as I use the same uh, high quality film. Um, so this is exactly my point. I mean, I want all photographers to have that access and flexibility when needed, rather than, you know, you have to fork out more money from your wallet, upgrade to the next great camera to get better image quality. And that's what I don't want. Um, you see the how Olympus does things these days for the last few years, they kind of rationalize the sensors, uh, um, the same sensors across the board. So that means that, you know, you have access to that image quality. Okay, there are features omissions here, which is what I'm talking about. You should use features to define the grade of the cameras, like the high-end cameras in Olympus terms. They have hybrid focusing, they have pro captures and all the other stuff, while the low-end cameras don't. So this is the way to go. And I think that uh, uh, this would make sure that the, uh, the photographer themselves know exactly what they want or what they need as a, uh, as a creative. And this is something that I believe everybody and like on earth all the camera manufacturers should do the same thing to reduce wastage and also to make it more cost effective and uh, just to give uh, photographers uh, a better choice in terms of um, uh, uh, functionalities more than just image quality because I think they should standardize it and make sure that everybody have that access to the brilliant image quality that every manufacturer offers. So this is kind of my thought about sensors and why they should have just one type. Let me know what you guys think and uh, uh, I would like to hear your thoughts about what I just said, whether it makes sense or not. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm going to continue doing my review on the 40 millimeters 2.8 macro from TT Artisan, by the way. And uh, so I'm going to go and look for bugs, maybe some mushrooms. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I will see you guys all next time. And remember to uh, give me a thumb if you enjoyed this. And also sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography. And of course, Olympus. Peace. By the way, if you wonder what I'm filming on right now is actually the iPhone again. I'm using the iPhone 13 Pro Max with the uh, iFootage monopod that I just reviewed and also the iSteady V2 AI tracking because I don't need the app or anything like that. I just basically plonk it on, turn on the AI camera. It just tracks me wherever I go, which is actually fantastic. And uh, I know um, this is gonna upset Tracy, you know, <laughs> and, uh, because she hasn't filmed me in a while. And this will allow me to do a little bit more animation. I can just walk around while uh, uh, letting the camera track me. It's just, this is just really, really awesome. Anyway, I'll speak to you all guys uh, soon. And uh, remember to stay tuned for all my upcoming contents. I've got a lot more stuff, including this, the 40 millimeters 2.8 macro, uh, and some of the lenses that I have actually in my, in my studio, uh, and some, some more bags. <laughs> yes, I do have more bags to uh, 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 reviews to come. Uh, they're really, they're all really fantastic. Um, by the way, there's one more thing before I end this uh, vlog is the uh, the new series. I'm going to call it the retrospective. Retrospective means that I'm actually looking back and some of the older gears that you may missed in the past. And uh, I've, I actually recently acquired some of the older gears. Uh, so I want to start looking at some of them and just making sure that uh, they're not forgotten because I think all of these old gear that I acquire are very significant one way or the other in the camera world. See you soon. Bye for now.